Now that you're familiar with the basic layout of QGIS Browser, let's explore some geospatial data in more detail. I'll again navigate to our exercise data for Lab 2 by left-clicking through the file tree. And let's select Hawaii counties. When I select a layer, the metadata tab is automatically selected, and I'm presented with information about my data set. For example, I can see that it's an Esri shapefile, it has polygon geometry, and it has nine features. Next, we'll click the Preview tab, and I've noticed that sometimes you need to click Attributes and go back to Preview. There we go. This gives us a preview of the geometry of our data set, the nine polygons. And now I'll again click on Attributes, and we're presented with the other part of our data model, the attributes. Each row corresponds to one polygon. The columns are things we know about the polygon, such as island name. Now let's preview our raster data set. I'll click on the Oahu Landsat satellite image and select the preview tab. And I'm presented with an image of a true color Landsat satellite image of the island of Oahu. Finally, let's take a look at the shape file vector file format in more detail. I'll select the data folder in the file tree. The param tab is all that's available when a folder is selected. And I'll expand this column so we can see the names. Now the display window is showing you what you'd see in Windows Explorer. In other words, you're seeing all the files. So let's focus on Hawaii counties. Notice that the file tree on the left shows just Hawaii counties.shape and an XML file, whereas the display window shows seven files named Hawaii counties. These are all the component files of this particular shape file. The file tree simplifies the view of your geospatial data, showing you only the shape and the XML files. In task three, you'll be introduced to the QGIS desktop application. You'll learn the basic layout and how to use it to view both vector and raster data.